What's up, Fortnite fam? Zeke here. This weekend, we saw the Fortnite Chapter 2 Season 1 Champion Series Finals. Did you miss something? Don't worry, we got Sundown, Monster D-Face, W, and Shy Wager to help recap what happened. Let's get started. In Middle East, games 4 and 5 were crucial, but in the end, Sane, Namfu, Pancake, and Mev came out on top. To get into the top 9 needed high consistent performances with a slew of eliminations as well, but to break into the top 5 you needed high high plus 10 elim games plus victory royales as well to be in those slots. Mev, Sane, Pancake and Namfu all played their roles perfectly in those situations and had 3 victory royales out of the 6 games in total. Games 4 and 5 were so crucial as they were not in the lead but for back to back performances as well using the RPG as their main tool to take height and provide pressure to everyone else below them. But game 6 they did come out not actually getting any points whatsoever in eliminations or placement but their phenomenal performances in game 4 and 5 led them to actually have enough points to just hold out at 112 for the number one spot. Yeah, and I'd say the key thing there was during game four, there was actually an interaction where the three top teams ended up on the north side of the same circle, and Pancake and Sane were able to knock off Jawad and Broken, toss over some grenades, pick up the elimination, but rather than push forward, they opted to disengage away, letting Snow, Soriano, Unit, and Brook close out that fight, but because they rotated early, they were the only ones to really set themselves up for success in that game four, which they ultimately went on to win. Over in Asia, Hoje, Peter Pan, Ming, and Medusa, aka Comes and Goes, held the number one spot with 98 points. In the Season X Trios Finals, we actually recall that it was Peter Pan and Hoje who came in second for Asia. This duo, paired with one of their other T1 members, Medusa, and the outsider DWG Ming, improved on their prior season performance by coming in first this season. This team was feeling it. An early game exit in game one did not mean anything as directly afterwards came two back-to-back -back victory royales with plenty of elims contributed by all sides. A notable setup coming out of Slurpee Swamps led them to a comfortable synergy that was unstoppable in late game, where Ming put on an explosive show and didn't allow anybody to stop them. They continued to have good performances all the way through, even though after game three, it was pretty much decided. The Season X champions of Rizart and company were actually trying to stay on their tail with two out of the four other victory royales, but it would not be enough because at the end of the day, it would be Hood J and Peter Pan's squad rise to the throne. In OCE, we continued to see the dominance of the X2 twins, paired with Volks and Geese. 99 points almost broke triple digit sundown, what do you think of their performance? As you talked about, at 99 points, they were able to take away one of the six matches in a victory royale where they scored 12 eliminations, but the key for them was in their placement. They were never outside of the placement points once throughout the entirety of the six match duration. Their worst placement was eighth, and then after that, they had one fifth place finish, and then the rest were into the top four. So very well done from them there. And on an individual effort side, the X2 twins played incredibly well, but Volks was really the one who kind of carried the load in terms of their eliminations out of their games who is leading them in elim score in four of the six so very well done out of him there making sure he got points up on the board and taking away the number one spots four points clear of mr fresh asian rel jinx and blink who were also very 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 close in terms of the contention oce was a joy to watch and congratulations crowning the squad there in the proving ground that was Europe, Red Rush, Droben, Snappy, and Wakey stood at the top, leading everyone else by 12 points. Man, Europe, the most insane zones and a fight all the way till game six to decide exactly who is gonna be in the top nine in any slot. The word of key though for the top squad of Wakey, Red Rush, Droban, and Snappy was defense. These guys came out of the gate fast. Game two, Wakey got half the Elans for his squad mid game. Very high Elon match for him. Red Rush clutched up at the very end by himself with flopper plays. Big game for them, kind of set them up to kind of hold off the rest of the region. That being said, the next two games did have a little bit of Elims, a few placements, not to pop off. They fell down a little bit. After that, though, 
game four, the biggest downward spiral zone I've ever seen in Fortnite history. And these guys just played mid ground the entire way through, picking up every elimination possible on rebooted enemies, on anyone else trying to drop down. And they took out the whole server by storm, winning out with a huge game that just set them up to defend against the rest of the region. Many teams tried for games five and six, but these guys still played placement with low elims, but just enough to keep their top spot all the way at number one, finishing off with a huge slew of points and ahead for the top spot for the European region. Yeah, and then also have to give a shout out to the second place squad there, Mongrel, Benji, Wolfies, and Nate. Nate coming up clutch in the final match set, a little bit of a flopper clutch to drive them all the way up into second place. So very well done from that squad that faced a little bit of adversity, you know, they're kind of flipping out members, but it was real exciting to watch Europe finish out there. NA East was a battleground, but the controller legend Unknown Army led his team to victory alongside Kez, Stable Ronaldo, and Avery with 89 points. Unknown Army really was the glue right here, putting together a band of slayers to back him up. Pulling together two victory royales, averaging over 7.7 .7 eliminations, the unsung hero here really is Avery, pulling in ultimate clutch factors in the final moments, although having that perfect backup from Unknown Army. One of his key components is relying on that good aim, upgrading his burst rifle almost every single chance that he had over at Slurpee Swamps up to the epic rarity level, allowing him to really burst down his opponents and take that lead in storm damage. Avery, Ronaldo, and Kez did not pick up any victories in the finals day, but with consistent performances, picking up several second places with high elimination games, this is how they secured their way to victory all the way through to the end. Not only picking up placements, but making sure to put down that fire when it counted most. Their last game was actually a nail biter, being that it was a run for the money and they only scored one or two points in those final moments. But another team we have to talk about is Arab, Aguilar, Inspire, and Kaz, fending off Team Liquid over at the farms. In Heat 2, they had a monster game one, kicking things off with a ton of elimination points, to only then follow up on Sunday, setting the record in the finals for a 23 elimination game. And something to note is that the majority of their points did come in the form of eliminations. In Brazil, we saw an insane performance. Sheko Boy, Lasers, Igo, and Psycho set a record-breaking 116 points in finals sundown. Tell me about these guys. So just so you're aware, Psycho is history. We've seen him before. He was partners with Fa at the Katowice Royale, so has had that international experience. They really were on the back of their placement threshold. Only one game were they outside of the top eight, and they also had back-to-back -back games where they were able to secure the victory royale and then get 20 plus eliminations, one of them rounding out at exactly 20, the other one being 21 that really rocketed them up into the lead. And the key here, which we saw in Brazil, as opposed to every other region, was teams would go and they commit for high ground, and when they realized they would pull zone or had priority on rotating to the moving zone, they would about face and use all of their rockets and all of their light ammunition, particularly a lot of SMGs as opposed to other regions, spraying towards the backside and picking up a lot of eliminations and denying opponents through that type of pressure. It was honestly a pleasure to see because this squad has really grown over the course of the FNCS. Originally, they were mainly just placement based and one of the more disciplined squad in a region where it's more about kind of flying and going for eliminations, but putting it all together in the finals and dominating the field, being 26 points clear of the second place team of Laleo, Kurtz, Wishy DP, and Singularities King. And finally, in NA West, Soggies, Kaizui, Domo, and Vicarus were far and away the leaders of the pack, 95 points. And in their last game, they actually only got three. That's how confident they were in their win. This region was one of the two regions where the winning team actually had a 50% win rate. A staggering three out of six games played were won by Soggies, Kaizui, Domo, and Vicaros. The story of Slurpee Swaps continued in this region, as the incredible setup out of Slurpee guaranteed them the comfort needed to take wins. A clutch three-piece elimination by Kaizui ended in one of the craziest 1v2s to get their second win and kick off their back-to-back. -back. Kaizui continues to electrify everybody, being one of my personal favorites to watch as they win this FNCS season. And that's it for FNCS Finals in Chapter 2, Season 1. Huge congrats again to all the brand new season champions. And as always, Fortnite fam, we'll see you guys on the Battle Bus. Beep, beep. 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 <laughs>
<laughs> Better give him a real beep beep. <laughs> Are we all beeping? We've never done that before. <laughs> yeah, we've done it. He sinks it and he goes beep beep. Okay. All right. All right.